Hey guys, how we doing? I wanted to thank you guys for your continued support. My friends, family, and the Bleacher Report family that I have uh, grown so close with and know so many people now. That's the reason I started this was for, because of Bleacher Report. And I love you guys. You guys are awesome. I uh, just want to say thank you. Continue to like and share and subscribe. And I'll keep these videos coming. So in this video, I want to talk about the options that Tennessee will have at quarterback this upcoming season. I believe there's four. There, you know, there's more, but I think there's four likely ones that will happen. And I think one is very likely. And I think one is very unlikely. Just so happens my the one the my favorite one is the unlikely option. So the first option, and I think this is the one that's the most highly likely uh, route that we go, is that we stick with Ryan Tannehill this year and Malik Willis as our backup. This is the one I least like, but it's the most likely option because it, I don't like it, guys. I really don't. I can't lie to you. I don't like it. It's more of the same. It, we How many times have we seen this show, right? We'll make the playoffs, maybe, most likely, and Tannehill goes in, loses us the game. Because they load the box up, dare us to throw, and Tannehill throws three picks since the end of the game. And we lose. Just don't want to see it. I'm done. I'm over it. I'm sure you guys are too. But that gives us the most likely option to compete and to succeed this year. Uh, the benefit to this is that, you know, we will be competitive. We'll, we'll win games. We'll probably make the playoffs. The other benefit is that Malik Willis has Malik Willis will have one more uh, season to develop to learn, and uh, it will also give us the opportunity to, you know, give the core of the offense that has, you know, we've grown accustomed to with Tannehill and Henry one more season to prove it. Tell you, tell them, hey, bring us home the Super Bowl, get that title. I don't see it happening, but hey, maybe they prove me wrong. Maybe they can do it. No matter what this team does, I will support them. I just don't like this option. It's more of the same. Uh, but it also allows us to take number to pick 11. We either trade it, move back in the draft. We take Paris Johnson Jr. with pick 11 or like Jackson Smith uh, and Jigba, both Ohio State boys. Maybe we, you know, that, that lets us fill all these holes that we have in the roster currently because we have a lot of holes, especially on offense. That is another benefit of going this route. We can use this draft to fill those holes. Uh, now, the second option would be to go get Lamar Jackson. This excites me. Uh, a backfield with Lamar Jackson and Derrick Henry, man, that's got to give defensive coordinators nightmares every night. How are you going to stop that? The, the read option? Play action? Ah, it would be fun to watch, guys. It really would. The injury histories with Lamar Jackson scares me. It really does. And obviously, if we have him as our quarterback, I'm thinking it's probably $50 million a year. That you might want fully guaranteed for five years, so a quarter of a million dollars, $50 million cap hit every season. We have a lot of cap next year, uh, a lot. So maybe it's doable. We make something work this year to allow us to have some cap. But, you know, there's two, re there's two, op or two ways to acquire Lamar Jackson. We can... Either offer him a contract, and by the way, he is his own agent. He doesn't have an agent, so he is his own. He represents himself. We could offer him a contract, and the Ravens can uh, decide to either match it, and then he signs with them, or decide not to, and then we give up two first-round picks. If we went this route, then I think we don't do this until either after the draft or after we make our first-round selection. So then we give them 2024 and 2025 first-round picks, and then we're able to use our 2023 first round pick to fill a hole. The other way this could happen is we contact Lamar, the Ravens. We decide that we want to trade for Lamar. This is still an option. It's probably a little unlikely maybe. But Lamar signs his tender with the Ravens. And then we offer the Ravens compensation for Lamar Jackson. This would be somewhat likely because Tannehill would most likely be in this trade as well. So maybe we don't have to offer two first-round picks. Maybe a first in, a in Tannehill or a second in Tannehill. I don't know what the value would be, uh, Tannehill to the Ravens. Uh, Tannehill's a serviceable starter. He really is. He's better than uh, Tyler Huntley. 
You know, the Ravens can compete, make the playoffs with Ryan Tannehill. We have. You know, that would be, in my opinion, the better option because it allows us cap uh, space at, and uh, freed up from Ryan Tannehill. That would be the better option for me because we're getting rid of Tannehill and acquiring Lamar Jackson, especially because of the, the cap room we're going to have to have to uh, sign Lamar Jackson. So those are those are that's the second option. Third option I have here would be we decide to move up in a draft. Now, I had a video on this uh, earlier where we are moving up for Anthony Richardson. That seems likely. Uh, it seems like more likely than Lamar Jackson, in my opinion, right now. Uh, I see. That, I think that's uh, our second option that the team is probably more or less weighing. We visited all top five quarterbacks pro days. You know, we seem very interested in the rookie quarterback class this year. I've not really seen us linked to much Lamar Jackson stuff other than he'd be a great uh, fit here and he'd be a great option. Uh, other than that, I haven't you know, seen anything substantial that says that we have had contract talks with him or any talks at all. And no team really has. It's really odd. Um, so that's the third option as we move up in the draft. This will also cost, also cost us draft, draft capital. We most likely get rid of Tannehill in this scenario as well. Now, a guy like Stroud, uh, a guy like Young, it's a possibility they fall to three. There's surprises every year in the draft, no matter what. There's something, somebody always falls, somebody always gets selected, and you're like, wow, they want that high. The teams fall in love with guys, or they don't, or they find a reason to, to not like a guy. It happens every year, no matter what. There's always surprises. So maybe somebody uh, like Stroud or Young Falls, and that'd be awesome. We can move to number three with Arizona, our Monty Austin for a connection there, and trade. Uh, you know, maybe someone doesn't like Young's size and it scares them. He falls to three. Uh, there's reports out there that say Houston Texans might not take a quarterback. They haven't really been visiting much of the quarterback's pro days either. Houston could be a wild card in this draft. Keep an eye out for them. I'm hoping they don't just tank again. And get Caleb Williams. Oh, that pissed me off. <laughs> I don't want that to happen. Which leads me into option four. This would be to either outright trade or cut Ryan Tannehill as your June 1st uh, date so we get the most cap value back for cutting him. I'd rather trade and get draft capital. And then we roll with Malik Willis. Malik Willis. Let's see what he's got. Give him the opportunity to succeed. Uh, give him, we have Tim Kelly. He did good with uh, Deshaun Watson in Houston. Malik Willis, similar guy, can scramble, throw the ball on the run. So let's see what they can do. Let's see what type of offense they can build for him because nobody was succeeding in Todd freaking Downey's offense, okay? The guy should have been fired actually at DWI. Probably should have been fired before that. Never should have been hired as an offense coordinator. He had a horrible track record before with the Raiders. We decided to make him our offense coordinator anyways because Arthur Smith did good. Ah, if you can't tell, I was not a fan of downing the run, run, pass, punt. Run, run, pass, punt. Every freaking time. Load the box. They're Tannehill to throw. And he can't. He throw a pick. And our defense was amazing last year. But they could just not. They could not single-handedly win us the game. But win us games. But they were trying their best. I mean, we shut down teams like Kansas City. We just couldn't score any points. And that was Malik Willis. But we did not have an offense tailored around him. You run the wildcat or him taking a direct snap. That's not an offense tailored around him. Let him do a bootleg out and hit somebody on the run. Give him read options with Henry. We weren't doing that enough at all, at all even on the bootlegs, really. Get him out of the pocket. Let him, let him move around. Our line was horrible last year, too, so he's running for his life. Give him a legitimate opportunity. Uh, Robert Woods last year was horrible. That's why he's cut. Uh, Todd Downing decided to have Jeff Swaim be one of our starting tight ends over or it was Hooper then Swain. I mean, Swain was supposed to be a blocker. He can't even block. And and then our best tight end, Chica Conquo, he was on a bench. And, and then he started using him towards the end of the season. Top Todd, Todd Downing's horrible. So I don't think we really saw what Malik Willis could really be. He wasn't given a fair shake, fair opportunity. And that sucks because he should be. He should be given a fair opportunity. This is the option I want to see us go with. And if he fails, and let's just say we go 4-13 and 13 or, I don't know, 5-12 and 12 maybe, you know, I don't know if that's enough to get us the first pick, but it's enough to get us to move up with a, for the first pick and not have to move or trade up from so, so far back in the draft. 
and get a guy like Caleb Williams out of USC who's supposed to be the next great quarterback. Uh, everybody's comparing him to Patrick Mahomes right now. That's what I want to see happen. I want to see Malik get a fair shot. If he doesn't succeed, we will have a great draft pick next year. And like I said earlier, I don't see this happening, even though I want it to, because as great as the Jeffrey Simmons signing was, it tells me that we want to compete. We're not, if we would have not signed Simmons and traded him and then cut Bayer to trade him and the same as Henry, and we start blowing this thing up, okay, we're tanking for Williams. I get it. You know, us signing Simmons, uh, this goes along with what Vrabel said and Carthon that it's not a full rebuild. We need to retool. I believe them. I think they want to win. They want to compete. Their jobs are on the line. Vrabel can't go out there and win three games next year and think he's got a legitimate shot to keep his job, even though I think he would for one season because he was just head coach of the year two years ago. So I don't think he would be a – he'd be on the hot seat for sure in 2024, but not this – but uh, they wouldn't fire him after the season. And the running Brian Carthon, you think he wants to go out his first season and, and tank? No. These guys want to compete. We have a decent roster. We're getting Landry back. We have Simmons. We have a great defense. Great defense. We need another linebacker, another edge player um, for sure. And then our cornerbacks, you know, they're young, but maybe they surprise us this year with better coaching. So we have a team. We have a defense. We need to fill holes on this offense, and we need to get better on offense. Our offense is horrible. We all know that. That's why quarterback is such a big, big, big topic for Tennessee right now. Everybody knows it's not Tannehill. He's not going to bring us there. You know, we had, in my opinion, two years ago against the Bengals, that was the best number one seed. That was our that was our that was our year, guys. That was our freaking year. And Tannehill decided to go out there and throw three picks. Lost us the game. Defense had nine sacks. I'll probably talk about this every other video because it still just gets under my skin. That's why I don't want to see Tannehill on this team next year. I'm over it. Even if it makes us go four and thirteen. Go ahead. I'd rather go four and thirteen, get a guy like Caleb Williams next year, or Drake May even. You know, Drake May. I shouldn't say even. Drake May is going to be a good guy, good quarterback too. Get one of those guys next year if we go three and fourteen, four and uh, thirteen, or some something in that range. Go get a guy like that if we suck. But you know what's going to happen if we keep Tannehill on the team? We're going to probably make the playoffs in a crappy division. Uh, we'll see if Jacksonville's for real or not, uh, and then we're we're going to lose round one. Maybe win a game in the wild card and then lose in the divisional. Been there, done that. Tannehill's not going to do it. They're going to load the box, dare him to pass, and he's going to screw up and throw picks. I'm over it. I don't want to see that anymore. So, like I said, this is my favorite option to give Malik Willis his fair shake, his fair shot, get rid of Tannehill. And the worst case scenario is we're in prime contention next year for one of the top quarterbacks in the draft which is a better quarterback draft class than there is this year. Obviously, those could, that could be wrong. Remember, Patrick Mahomes' quarterback class is supposed to be pretty bad too, right? So, that, you know, that guy could have that take completely wrong. We'll, we'll find out a couple of years from now what really happened, you know, who's who and who's good. So, guys, let me know what you think. Which option would be your favorite for us to do? Is there another option that you'd rather see us go with? Let me know, guys. Talk soon. Bye.